Hi, it's Wesley with 22 Zines. I want to give a big hello and welcome to everybody who has subscribed or interacted with uh, my videos in the last like four months or so, however long it's been since I've made <laughs> another one. I am incredibly surprised and flattered and, uh, you know, I always thought that I was interesting, but it's nice that some other people think that I'm interesting enough to be worthy of a follow as well, so thank you very much. Um, today I'm getting back into it into with my um, uh, zine collector series where I'm showing off some zines in my collection and today I'm gonna my my theme for the zines today is zines with an unusual shape or production or packaging or basically things that aren't your usual folded paper in half uh, <laughs> or you know folded mini zine zines. Uh, so it'll probably get more clear as I'm actually showing things. Um, so to start out, I wanted to show off My Succulent Concrete Heart, which is by Enola Dismay, and this is a COVID zine, like a COVID diary zine, and um, this is somewhat unusual, but also very interesting in that it is just a stack of paper that's stapled like this to make a book so there's no folding at all and I think it's um it's almost weird that you don't see this more often because it's so simple it's so accessible and you can just um not have to worry about folding not have to do any sort of um assembly or laying things out in a particular way so that they'll print correctly like it it's just it's just really interesting and it feels very much like you know making making individual pages um, out of collage and out of text and it just feels like it's it's almost more accessible for the for you know people to start creating something like this um, that's not folded at all it's I don't even know how many pages probably a good like 20 20 ish pages um, this is the back of the of the first one which I like very much and, the, and um, you know, in addition to being a rather interesting shape, the zine itself is just really, I don't know how else to put it, but just like classic zine, classic photocopied, you know, doodles, text on a typewriter with, you know, complete with typos. It's got um, photos. It's got photocopy streak lines. It's got hand-drawn comics. It is so cool. It is so punk. <laughs> and it is so inspiring to sort of remind me of what zines really are all about and what I what I like about them. Um, because admittedly, I can get a little bit in my head about production or making things look good. And I think that's what's really liberating about zines. So uh, the content of this zine and the sequel, My Succulent Concrete Heart Number 2, um, it's a diary zine that was sort of being written and, and done through COVID. So a lot of it is references to COVID and how they feel, you know, what thoughts pop into their head through the pandemic. Um, and just sort of a, a diary throughout. It has photos, it has drawings, it has all that sort of thing. I'll read a couple of quotes from it. This one is from June 17th, 2020. And it says, uh, fuck capitalism and this fucking goddamn system. You don't hate Mondays, you hate capitalism. And you don't hate adulting, you hate the mundane and unnecessary. I want my list of tasks at hand to include only true essential activities. Hopping and bopping, sleep, zoning out, being nice to certain people. That gives you sort of a sense of the just amazing punk ass energy of Enola Dismay. I love this scene so much. <laughs> it's so it's so rad. Uh here's a few flip throughs from my succulent concrete heart number two. Um and a back tarot card. Always a bonus. The hermit. Um here's a few pages on the inside. And so these are all these were both written in twenty twenty, um, as far as I know. And uh, what's also what I also really like about the scene is that uh, the creator is from the Bay Area in California, which I had, you know I lived there for a while, and so I I 
always like when there are references to places or things that that I understand. Um, the scene can sort of get a little intense. There are a lot of depictions of grief and depression and uh, suicidal thoughts and just sort of going through the grief of um, friends and relatives who have died or been hurt from um, from COVID, but it's also very uplifting in a lot of ways, and it's really just an amazingly fun read. And again, like, it seems so simple just to staple a stack of papers on the side, and yet I have never seen this in a zine before. So I totally want to try that. <laughs> The next scene that I have to show off, or the next uh, few scenes, rather, is one that has come up, I think, like, once before in my gigantic summer zine haul video from last year. Um, this is called You Zine. Um, you Zine comes from Australia. I believe it's in the, like, Adelaide, Brisbane, and Sydney. I can't totally remember because it goes over over multiple, you know, it's been going on for a very long time, like years. Um, and basically you can get these from the creators at Small Zine Volcano, and of course I'll link everything below as usual. Um, Small Zine Volcano, where basically you pay them however much you want in shipping, and then, like, so you'll just how do I put this? You'll pay them a flat rate. So if you want to pay them 20 bucks, they will cram as many zines as possible into a package that will cost $20 to ship. So basically you send them a flat rate and they send you a bunch of zines, um, you know, in accordance to however much they can ship to wherever you are in the world, which I think is a really cool idea. And the zines themselves are, are so interesting and so unusual and I feel like they're really getting at the central idea of um, trading and cataloging your life, and they are very ephemeral. <laughs> um, I'm sort of a big person who believes in archives and believes in like the preservation and access of information and of created works over time, and this is almost uncomfortable for me in a little bit of a way because they are created in a way that is meant to be uh, fleeting and meant to be, in a way, um, destroyed. So the zines themselves are sent in these uh, paper packages, for the most part. They're, they switch it up occasionally, but they're sent in like a paper package like this that's stapled at the top that you have to open. Um, and this sort of acts as the cover. And then on the inside, you get a very simple, like, newsletter-style folded paper um, zine. And it's really interesting. Um, and so there are a lot of, like, their diary zines, per zines, sort of talking about um, events in their life. They're very random and very, uh, everyone is very unique because it's so short and so cheap to make that you can just write whatever you want. And so as a result, there are, like, hundreds of these, <laughs> literally hundreds of these. I think they've like the main the main creator Luke tries to make like one a week ish and that's been happening for many many years um but you kind of see what I mean of like no individual zine has a super high production value it's not turned into a production it's literally just like th like this is <laughs> I'm all over the place with these this is just like a a thing from a game called, um, I'm not going to rip it off, but it's like from a 20 questions board game thing that's taped to the front and it says like instruct players that I am a thing and it tells you, you know, I am a newspaper and it gives you the different questions and I don't know, like it's, it's just an actual playing card from a board game that's just taped to the front here along with the stamp for using, um, and some other things that they've had, like they have just like strips of paint. They have, um, here it has like a, just a list, like a to-do list that someone was writing and sort of a, like a budget finance list that they were just writing on this. So it seems like they probably just sort of carry around a whole bunch of these little paper things and write on them and doodle on them and just do whatever and cram some zines in them. And it just feels so, so 
raw. <laughs> is that super pretentious? But you know, and and like like this one, it's stamped on. It says uh, the bass solo, and you can call me Al. You know the one's like. I, I, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, and they have, you know, this one that has, I don't even know what this is. It's some sort of photograph thing that's probably really embarrassing that I don't know it to people who actually know shit about film, but like, it almost looks like one of those things that, have you seen like those viewfinders and you, and you stick the little things in them and then you get a picture of the of the slide. I don't know. It's a photo slide thing that's just, like, taped on. Um, and here's one that's... It's just a postcard with the zine stamped on the back and the zine part written right there. Um, Uzine is so inspiring to me because I feel like it's it's really inspiring me to open up a little bit, and um, it feels really special to receive one and read one because it feels like you're getting a letter from a friend, and it feels like you are opening up something that was made just for you. They're all, every single one of them is unique and original. Um, and it's just so, <laughs> it's so cool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finally open up this bass solo one, which I've kind of been saving. I, I opened up a ton of them and... I don't know, for whatever reason, I want, I almost wanted to save this one sealed in like a collector's value thing, but I think that's ridiculous. And I think that what is the purpose of a zine, but to be read and shared and enjoyed. And if that means, um, opening it up and, and in a way destroying part of it, um, in the sense that you are, you are changing, you are changing the packaging, you are changing it, um, you know, irreversibly, then that's, Part of it. So here we go. We're going to open it up. Zine unboxing. And I'm still kind of careful with it because I don't know. I've always been that sort of kid too of like opening up the wrapping paper very carefully and folding it up and using it for things. And then my sister would just like rip it all open and would get really irritated that I would take so long to open things. Um, also, watch out for staples on this. I have, while I'm opening using, I've hurt myself on the staples multiple times, probably because I'm trying to be careful with it. Okay, here we go. Yay. Dear you, since, sen since spending time with Cindy over the summer, I have been really getting into sunrises. I'm talking every day since COVID-19 isolation set in. I've been setting my alarm for 6.30 and venturing outside for my allocated daily exercise. I've been heading down to the local Oval, Oval? Australian thing, <laughs> with a bag of weights and spending an hour working out outdoors. This is soothing. I never would have done in a million years in the past, but it is happening and it feels good. My fitness quest during isolation, oh, better open this up is to hit 100 sit-ups and 50 push-ups. I'm currently sitting at 40 sit-ups and 26 push-ups, but there really is no suggestion of isolation coming to an end anytime soon, so there's plenty of time. The sun comes up over in the east. Another day, an another day in the park. Prior to this serious sunrise action, <laughs> I have been more of a one-off sunrise fan. I took a group of grumpy students up Mount Buller to see the sunrise a few years ago, and pretty soon after, the first parts of the sun popped up. They were grumpy. They were, oh, I'm sorry, they were grumpy no more. <laughs> Although, in their defense, they had set the smoke alarm off at 2 a.m., so when I bounded into their room at 5 a.m., they were quite within their rights. And I've gotten into a few sunrises where I've been camping down the Great Ocean Road, but this is a this is a sustained sunrise attack, day after day of sunrises. Added to that isolation has made me pay closer attention to the end of the day, too. I live in a slight hill, and there's quite a big sky when I look at the back window. Look out the back window. So after watching the sunrise in the east in the morning, I watch it set in the west in the evening, and another day is over. In between, I've been reading Straight Life by Art Pepper and Lori Pepper. Art spends a lot of the book in jail, San Quentin no less, and just generally living through decades of complete misery, broken up by moments of saxophone greatness. 
In comparison, my isolation seems very bright, not quite broken up by the same degree of saxophone greatness yet. Maybe if this isolation continues, greatness will be revealed. I'll speak to you again soon from Luke. So there you go. A zine reading of you zine, this particular one, the bass solo in You Can Call Me Al. I have another quick using thing that I want to show off. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it is, it has to be included in this. So first on the back, you get the stand, this, you know, the, the usual letter from Luke and it, it folds up into a, uh, you know, folds up like this. And then on the other side, you get this <laughs> portrait of a zinester, which is all written out in text and this and this face was created so as you can see yes this is an entire another letter here <laughs> so of course i had to show that off anyway highly recommend picking up some using if for no other reason than just curiosity all right let me shuffle through here and pull out the next zines that i'm gonna highlight and these are zines from anita rose of um, Sail into the 90s, and these zines, okay, these are so big. <laughs> these zines are collected and presented in folders. So I'm talking like the classic school folders that you go and you get at Walmart for like 40 cents when you go to school. It's probably more now, but whatever. Um, and so again, you have the you have the full size, you know, full letter size, eight and a half by eleven, here, and they're just, you know, attached in by the brass fasteners on the inside of the folder, and I just think that is so cool. There's some random stickers still left on the back. There's, uh, <laughs> like, look at this, look at this fucking Toys R Us sticker. <laughs> it's such a small thing to be excited about. Um, Anyway, so this particular one is to worst, and it's from, uh, let me see, August 2017. This is officially issue five, and this is the worst moments of my favorite TV shows, in which Anita goes through their favorite TV shows and just points out the worst episodes and why they don't like them. So we've got The Office, we've got Adventure Time, we've got The Simpsons in here somewhere, uh, Seinfeld... Uh, everybody loves Raymond. There's, you know, just a whole bunch of them. There's some Bob's Burgers. Um, basically all the, <laughs> all the shows that Anita likes to watch and then pointing out the worst episodes of them, which is such an amazing zine idea. And I totally love doing rankings of episodes and that sort of thing. So I'm totally going to steal that idea and use it for a zine at some point. Um, but honestly, like the thing that I really like about this is it just reminds me, and I'm sure this is probably exactly what Anita was going for, but it just reminds me so much of being at school and making your own books and your own magazines and sticking things in your folder and trading notes with each other. And um, this is really like the only context that I've ever actually liked these folders. Like I always hated them. They got so beat up. Um, I was always more of like a composition notebook kind of person uh, because I didn't like how loose everything was in these, but you know, it's just, it's, it's nostalgic, but in a very tactile way. I don't know. I just really appreciate it. So this is one version. And of course they have some other zines that are also presented in this version. This one is sail into the nineties after, you know, what the official um, zine project is called. And, uh, it's the same, the same thing. I think, oh, by the way, I think their shop is called The Last VCR. Um, here's this one I really love because it's on different color copy paper. It's so cool. Um, basically, this particular zine is going through moments of, moments that happened throughout the 90s, like moments of historical or pop culture or um, otherwise just moments that are memorable and significant. Um, funny enough, I feel like I'm slightly too young to know about any of this stuff, so it's really interesting. It feels kind of like getting caught up on 
something that I never knew about. Um, I just really appreciate that. And of course, then they have one for the 2000s. <laughs> um, the 2000s died real quick. This one, I remember a lot of these a little bit, a little bit more. Um, but it goes through a lot of moments from from the 2000s. This, these are sort of, it, it's, it's more of like the turn of the century, or wait, turn of the millennium, whatever. Um, anyway, so really love these. And you know what, while I'm, while I'm talking about <laughs> Anita Rose's stuff, I'm just going to pull this up from my shelf here. I also got <laughs> this journal from them, <laughs> which is the, I think I found this before I even found the zines. It's just like a handmade journal <laughs> from the cover of a, of a season four to Seinfeld DVD thing. Like I haven't quite written in it yet because I have too many journals, but I just, I'm just obsessed with it. I just really love it. Anyway, highly recommend um, any of those Sail Until the 90s um, or, you know, any of any of Anita Rosa's stuff, honestly. So, the last one that I have to show off is incredibly unique, incredibly interesting, and the first and only zine that I've gotten off of Kickstarter. So, these are magpie zines um and they're done by uh scott someone someone i totally can't remember <laughs> scott russell morris and basically they are tarot zines and sort of tarot inspired zines that are uh that included alongside the zine are a whole bunch of little um little pieces little ephemera and little random mini zines and you know the idea being that magpies like to collect little bits and bobs and uh so it's presented in like this very fancy envelope thing and i love it it was so fun to pull out like you remember like uh dragonology and wizardology books like those really big ones that had all the all the bits inside and had like whoa a feather this is a this is a dragon feather whoa those sort of things that's kind of what opening this up feels like. It is so cool. And of course, for tarot lovers and, and witchy people, I feel like this is a, a very common um, <laughs> fascination. So I'm going to pull these out. This is from the Ace of... Hold on one second. There's still some more stuff stuck in here. Ah! So this is from the Ace of Magpies. And the plan is that Scott's going to do a series of them to create an, an a fifth Minor Arcana suit, uh, like the suit of magpies, and it'll be presented in this zine form. And uh, they also have um, a, a tarot card designed for each one. Anyway, so let's just let's just go through this like one at a time. Um, I got in mine this little two of birds thing. I think it's a, I, I, is this a magnet or a sticker? I can't, I think this is a magnet. Really cool. Um, this, oh, this was just a little, um, piece of paper that was wrapped around the outside of it. And I don't usually bother to slide it on anymore just cause I don't want it to get too damaged, but it, it's just adds to the experience. Um, let's see, there's this little collection of tarot cards. Some of them, so a few of these are just tarot cards from, uh, Scott's collection that, uh, they've thrown in here. So this is Seeker of Wands. I'm sorry, I don't know what any of these cards are from or like what, what decks they're from. Seeker of Wands. This is the, um, three, uh, I like the, um, what am I trying to say? The Empress. God. Um, and it says down here, the lovely lady that stands by the starry river to meet her Lord. Really cool. This is the Ace of Cups. And then these are tarot cards created by Scott Russell Morris, or I think there was a collaborator. I can't remember. Um, so this is the Hierophant. It's like the fragmented Hierophant, and it goes along with a mini zine that was included in this. And then this is the official Ace of Magpies tarot card that will, you know, that goes in, in the series, in the Magpie series. 
so here, I'll just go through all the little bonus. Just like a little thank you card. Um, the This is a set of stickers um, <laughs> that just have the... Um, what am I trying to say? Whatever. Ha have have other things that were that were sent. And then now to the actual zines. <laughs> this one is a mini zine called the Fragmented Hierophant. Um, and it's sort of a poetry collage kind of zine. It's really interesting. And it does open up. I love when mini zines open up. This one opens up into a tarot spread mat like a like a you know where you can do your tarot spread and it shows you a particular tarot spread it's really interesting and it's i think that it expresses a lot about the hierophant card like just one quote that always gets me you live a law of chastity once you have hobbled together uh, sorry <clears throat> you live a law of chastity one you have hobbled together to suit your adolescent desires you are virginal but rarely pure I don't know, just really, really interesting. Love that one. And then here is the big enchilada, the Ace of Magpies zine. Um, and this is so cool. So right off the bat, when you open it up, you are presented with this little mini fold-out zine. So, you know, it is your standard mini zine glued in there. And it has some text and... Um, so it, give, it gives, it gives a meaning for the, um, Ace of Magpies zine also, but the, or like the, the Ace of Magpies as a card in, in this hypothetical fifth suit. And here it's got some Persine diary stuff. Like when I moved to Korea, the magpies were the first wildlife I noticed. And, it, um, you know, goes on like that. And here it shows a little more like... For most of my life, I believed in the divine. I can't say that as unequivoc I can't say that as equivocally now, but I'm still open to the idea. And just goes on a little bit more about um, sort of Scott's personal magical journey, whatever you'd want to call it. Um, you turn it over here, and there's <laughs> there's a little thing that you can photocopy and cut out the page of rivers, which is just like a tarot card made from this old map you have poetry you have um what do you hunger for it's another fold out with drawings um and you can unfold the entire thing and it turns into this amazing collage with another tarot spread it is just so cool um so the other thing that i really want to highlight about this is that Scott Russell Morris is very concerned about accessibility and is and alongside the physical print versions is making accessible PDF versions um, accessible by screen readers and other um, accessibility devices. Like I know that they're working with someone particular, like working with someone specifically to make sure that they're accessible, and I just think that is so <sighs> needed. You know what I mean? Um, so, anyway, how do I how do I put a pin on this? I suppose the la the next thing is that um, Scott Russell Morris is doing Kickstarter somewhat regularly, as far as I can tell. I happen to get in on the Ace, but they are doing more Kickstarters uh, for each zine, and they're and they're very small. You know, like it's it's more of like a a pre order thing than a than a Kickstarter trying to get a project off the ground. If that makes any sense, um, so. Uh, two of Magpies was a little while ago, and I think three should be coming up soon. And I know that they are trying to, um, make previous issues purchasable or accessible in some way. I don't totally know how because I happen to get on the ground floor, but, um, as far as I know, it's not entirely too late. Definitely check it out. And... You know, if nothing else, I think that this is just such a fascinating and unique zine and a fascinating way to present a zine. It's a lot of work <laughs> to, um, you know, individually glue in all these things. It's not quite as easy as fold it in half and staple it. Um, and frankly, that's the same for a lot of these zines, except um, my succulent concrete heart. That's just, you know, even easier than a lot of zines. You just stack it and staple it. But... Um, Anyway, I'm just, 
I don't totally know how to wrap this up, but I'm very inspired by all of these zines, and I hope that you are too, and I hope that this is a good reminder that a zine really doesn't have to be folded in half and stapled. It doesn't have to be folded in a particular way, folded into a mini zine. Um, and you can do a lot with zines. <laughs> I mean, that's that's kind of what they're there for, is to um, be able to express yourself in ways that you would never be able to do in traditional publishing. And I think that the presentation and the way that it's folded or the way that it's um, shared and, you know, physically, the way that it's physically created is absolutely one of those, like one of, one of the ways that you can break free from traditional publishing. Anyway, I will show off some more zines soon and I will talk to you later. Bye.